Where to live, Toronto East or Toronto West? In this video, I will give you a good sense what lifestyle this area offer and what the cons and pros of each side of Toronto are. Hello, my name is Olena and I'm a real estate broker here in Toronto. My team and I help our clients to relocate to Toronto or simply to choose a great neighborhood in the city. This video will help young families to choose east or west of Toronto based on the information about the lifestyle on both sides of the city, analysis of, of schools, amenities, location advantages, demographics, and more. But before I begin, for those of you who are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video about living in Toronto as well as its real estate and for my entire audience. If you like the videos, please like, comment down below and contact me if you have any questions. Let's begin. When I work with the clients who plan to move to a quiet, family-friendly neighborhood, I always start with advising to consider Central Toronto, East Toronto and West Toronto. While in my previous videos I spoke a lot about Central Toronto and its neighborhoods, there is plenty to talk about East and West Ends. I don't mean a geographical division of the city by Young Street on the East and West part. I mean two neighborhoods to be compared, High Park uh, on the West and the beaches in, on the East. Western Toronto is often seen as uh, the more updated and upscale side of the city, with a denser population of both people and retail spaces. Eastern Toronto is newer and developing uh, and historically considered to be cheaper. Let's see both areas in numbers. We will start with population. It is approximately the same. Over 22,000 people live in High Park and there are over uh, 21,000 residents in the beaches. 62% of the High Park residents are in the age between 30 and 60 years old, while in the beaches 50% are of the same age category. In both areas, more than half of the population is married. 81% of the High Park residents are employed, while in the beaches this number is 55%. Uh, when it comes to the real estate, 67% of the households in the High Park area are occupied by owners, while in the beaches we see this figure is higher, 83%. The average selling price for a detached home in 2022 in High Park is $2.5 million and the same $2.5 million in the beaches. As I mentioned earlier, home prices on the east side of Toronto have always been lower. Just recently, with the high demand for houses in family-friendly neighborhoods and with a lack of inventory, this situation started changing. Now, when we have the basic picture in numbers, let's dive into the lifestyle offered by these two areas. Each neighborhood has a number of similar features. Outdoor life, strong communities, plenty of dog lovers, family-friendly uh, restaurants and shops, public transportation on both sides of Toronto is highly accessible. But there are also plenty of unique features. The beach homes are of a different architectural style and the ambience in the streets is somewhat relaxed and laid back. The west side is more urban and Bloor Street is full of boutique stores, old school Eastern European cafes and upscale new restaurants. Both neighborhoods have low crime rates and the average household income is above Toronto's average. Typical resident is a professional living in a household with a dual income, planning or raising a family. Both areas are surrounded by fast developing smaller neighborhoods. Riverdale, Leslieville, Danforth Village are the most desirable neighborhoods close to the beaches, while Roncesvalles, Swansea, Parkdale, Junction, Baby Point are the closest areas to High Park. On the east, these smaller neighborhoods in most cases are cheaper than the beaches because they are just developing and going through gentrification, plus the houses and the lots are significantly smaller. On the west, most of the closest areas to High Park are not cheap. In some cases, they are even more expensive. This is due to the long-time established reputation of the West End as a family-friendly, safe, beautiful and convenient destination to settle down. Now, let's look which area offers more schools with high rankings. I will use the data taken from the Fraser's Institute website as a reference to this discussion. As a reminder, Fraser's Institute displays performance of the most public and Catholic schools in the elementary and secondary segments. 
This first map shows elementary schools in the High Park area. As you may see, most of them highlighted with green color, which means their ranking goes up from almost 8 to 10. Just a few examples of highly desirable schools. Rani Mead Junior and Senior Public School with the ranking of 8.2. Uh, Swansea Junior and Senior Public School with the ranking of 8.4. St. Pius 10th Catholic School with uh, 8.4, Howard Junior Public School with 8.4, and Garden Avenue Public School with a ranking of 8.7. High schools are also highly ranked. One of the most sought after is Ursula Franklin Academy with the ranking 9.2 and lots of advanced programs to prepare your child for the university programs and future career. Now let's look at the east side and review the schools just the same way. This is the map for the elementary schools in the Beaches area. The most desirable schools are Courcelet Public School with a ranking of 9.2, Balmy Beach Community School with 8.8, .8, St. Denis Catholic School with a ranking of 8.2. All the rest of the schools are ranked below 8 and you see them colored in yellow. The high school map features only three schools. Uh, two of them are Catholic with not so high ranking of 6.8 and Malvern Collegiate Institute with its ranking at 8. I would like to remind you here that if your goal is to settle down in a neighborhood with a great public school, you must check if your prospective home is actually located in the boundaries of the desirable school before submitting your offer. Comparing East and West, you may notice that there are more schools with higher ranking in the west side of Toronto. It is one of the reasons why the housing in the High Park area has always been more expensive and in a higher demand. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you need active listings in these two areas. Now let me summarize the entire information I have given you in this video. First, let me tell you this, no matter what you choose, High Park or the beaches, you will not go wrong. As a practicing realtor, I had an opportunity to analyze both areas for my clients, and both areas perform well for families. Both are safe, conveniently located within city boundaries, close to public transportation, major streets, highways, and downtown. While driving around the city, I only noticed that the east uh, of Toronto is less busy and less congested during the rush hours uh, than the west side. It may change though uh, because the beach is acquiring more condos and obviously the population will increase. By the way, in terms of condo living in both areas, condos are not so numerous in High Park and the beaches as, for example, they are in downtown or Young and Eglinton. I would also say that the lifestyle in the beaches area is more relaxed while uh, the west side is more active and filled with offices, businesses, venues and activities. High Park is famous for its park, uh, which is called just the same way and attracts lots of Torontonians as well as tourists. The beaches are known for its uh, sandy waterfront, which also attracts lots of people throughout the year. So what to choose, east or west? I recommend you spend a few weekends and weekdays in each area communicating with residents, shopping in local stores, touring the schools if you have kids and, in general, feel the flavor of each neighborhood. While working with a knowledgeable realtor, you will be seeing lots of properties, receiving lots of information, and this will help you with your final choice. Don't hesitate to reach out, contact us by calling, texting, emailing, or even commenting down below. We are actively using WhatsApp, Viber, and WeChat for your convenience. Also, I would like to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video about living in Toronto as well as its real estate. Please comment down below with your questions and if you are thinking of moving to Toronto or simply relocate to a great neighborhood, I will be happy to help. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next videos.